everyone, thank you for joining us. Um, well, today we have a, a very interesting webinar. It's called the RSK Ethereum Token Bridge. It's one of our last announcements and our one of our last tools. With us, we have uh, Pedro Prete. He's the product owner of interoperability, and he he was well. He was leading the team that decide designed this this token bridge, and he'll be here with us to explain us a little bit how it works, how it's function, how you can well cross all your tokens and still use uh, RSK and Ethereum. Uh, I think that it's a very exciting project, and the most important thing is that well. It creates more opportunities for people, for holders, especially who wants to to go from one side to the other. So, well, here with us we have Pedro, and as as usual, you can raise your hand, ask as many questions as you want. Uh, I wanted also to remind you that that this um, webinar will be recorded, so we'll upload it afterwards to our YouTube channel, and you can watch it later. So, well, thank you so much for joining us, and I'll leave you with, with Pedro. Bye-bye. Hi, all. Well, yeah, this is the token bridge between RSK and Ethereum. Um, as Fran said, my name is Pedro Prete, and I'm the product owner of the interoperability team in IOB Labs that is in charge of the, R, of the RSK Ethereum token bridge. So, uh, during this webinar, we're going to basically see three things which is what is the token bridge, how to use it, and how it works inside. The first two are more orientated to anybody who wants to cross their tokens. The third one will be aimed to developers who want to understand how the token bridge works and maybe use it programmatically. So what's the token bridge? Well, the token bridge is a protocol that allows to move IRC20 tokens between RSK and Ethereum. You can send the tokens back and forth using the bridge and you will receive it on the other chain in exactly the same address that you used to send it. The, behind the token bridge, we have a lot of smart contracts and oracles that are connected to both chains and a decentralized application that allows us to do the, the effectively change, uh, sorry, change no, uh, cross our tokens between Ethereum and RSK. So we'll start for something very basic. Most of you already know, but probably some of you don't. So what is an RC20 token? Well, RC20s are actually a smart contract that follow a, pro a, a protocol, a standard, that defines it a rule for issuing tokens. Um, the tokens are crypto assets that can be traded, but unlike cryptocurrencies, for example, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Tron, EOS, they don't have a dedicated blockchain. And the ERC20 tokens are the main asset offered in an ICO in Jacob Offer. You may have heard of those. The ICOs were trending a lot last year. And, and you may have issues trying to understand somehow um, why you can call a transaction using an ERC20. That's because you need a cryptocurrency to pay the gas of a transaction. But an ERC20 token is an asset and it's worth something. Uh, the worth of the token is given by the market and it's defined by the kind of token there is. I have a couple of examples here. For example, we have the DAI, TrueUSD, and Tether. The three of them are stable coins. They are tokens that are one to one, they have a parity one to one with the dollar. So if you have one DAI token, equivalents to one dollar and the same goes for two USD and Tether. But there are also other kinds of ERC20 tokens. For example, you have Reef, Chainlink and Investor. These are utility tokens. For example, Chainlink is used to pay to oracles to get the, the price uh, of the, let's say, Ether and versus USD. And you can use it in a lot of oracles, the, the Chainlink. The RIF token is used to pay for the RIF services. So you have RNS, marketplace, gateways, and uh, other services that are paid with this token. And lastly, we have Investoland, which is uh, the token from Sesocio that is used to invest in 
in other projects. So you, you have a, a lot of different utilities for ERC20 tokens, and the value of each token uh, is, is different. You can get more info about the, all the tokens that are in CoinMarketCat. I'll leave you a link there, and I will give you the, the at the end of this webinar, we will be posting the, the slides so you can go back and check whatever you want. So, how to use it? Well, first we need a, a wallet that uses, um, that's a Chrome extension, the wallet, which is, it has RSK integrated with it, but you could also use Metamask. And you have to use a custom node. My custom node. If you use Nifty Wallet, you will see a message if you go like this. Like it specifies that the account, it will have a different address from the one from Ethereum if you reload your seed. The idea of using a custom node instead of using the default one is that we remain the, with the same account even if we are on, on Ethereum or on our skate test or main. So that's important. So the first thing is go to Nifty Wallet and download the Chrome extension. I already have it installed, it's this one. <laughs> The second part, uh, that you, you know, the second thing that you will is to have you know, money or balance to be able to cross the transactions. In this case, we're gonna be using the faucet from RSK to get RBTC, which is the coin that allows us to work on the RSK network. So what you have to do is paste your address and the catch. And then just get our BTC. After 30 seconds, which is the time that a uh, block is mining in our scale, we will have the balance and we'll have some RBTC to perform uh, unsent transactions. While we're doing that, we're also gonna need a token to be crossed using the bridge. So we're going to the RIP faucet to get some RIP testnet tokens. Yeah, I need balance in order to get the tokens. So first I need <laughs> the faucet to get me the, the money in order to, to do the transaction. So now I have sorry, now that I have some money, I can submit the, the transaction for asking for the re testnet faucet. This also is gonna take some time. You can see it here. Once this is mine, I will get some brief tokens. So in order to add it to the, the tokens, to the Nifty Wallet, we need to go to tokens and add the tokens here. Not all of the tokens are gonna have the their symbol but the RIP token already has it on it. Okay. Okay, so transaction fail. No B. Just wanna dispense with again. While we wait for this, um, we can do the same on Ethereum. You can get the Ethereum on the Covan faucet. We're gonna use the Covan testnet network for Ethereum. And uh, I recommend to use uh, two USD as they have a nice, nice faucet in order to get tokens. And once we get uh, our tokens, we can go to the app in order to cross the, so um, there are instructions in how to cross them on the developer's portal of first case. So if you want more information about how to do it or you 
missed something that I did, you can go to this link and do it by yourself. So this is how the token bridge centralized application looks like. First, you have to log in. You will use your Nifty wallet and the network that you're in. Uh, it seems that it's not working correctly. Maybe send you a higher price. Okay. So you will log in, and once you are logged in, uh, you will see the network you are connected to and the list of tokens that you can cross. So the list of tokens are different from testnet and mainnet for anyone supporting a bit more on testnet as we are testing and in this case we're gonna sorry it's not working correctly i'm just gonna use my other account that already has Rift. so i have a lot of proof on this account now we're gonna send those to um Coban. the only thing that this account has on Coban are well, also these with tokens that I will have a very close oh, sorry touching that I didn't want to do that which is 18. I'm just telling you the number because when we cross it you may see that it's not the same number and cross that because I'm already holding 18 with tokens crossed and another thing that you will see is when we cross the tokens, we are going to add an E if we cross from RSK to Ethereum and an R if we're going to cross from, um, from Ethereum to RSK. So that, that's expected. And the RIF token on testnet is called t -RIF in order to differentiate it from the one you made. Okay, so one second. I, well, as you see now that I'm in Coban, network he the and the decentralized application automatically detects the network you're connected and it will show you the token that you can select and the one that you will receive so i'm gonna go back to our scale scale testnet and i'm gonna select t with token and I have 670, yeah, it's on set. So, where I'm gonna receive this, we're gonna receive it on this guy you here, that is in Coban on this content. That is the ET with token. That is a mural token of the one that we have on our screen. So, Let's cross the tokens. So we will see that a pop-up appears and that we have like a list of things. First, it validates that the amounts are crossing and the balance is correct. Second, as we are talking about transferring ERC20 tokens, we will have to submit two operations in order to have the contract to get the tokens. So the first one is approving the contract to be able to get the tokens. This is the first one that we're gonna submit. It's gonna take around 30 seconds because that's the time we need for the transactions to happen. Uh, as I previously mentioned, that's the mining time that we have currently on RSK. So after 30 seconds, a second pop-up will open the as uh, will be for transferring the tokens from our ERC20 token, in this case, the RIF token, to the bridge itself. So I'm gonna submit this. Once this is submitted, the, the bridge will emit an event and will be crossed by an oracle after 10 blocks. Let's check if we have any questions. Why Coban and not Robstein? Okay, uh, we started on Coban because we were doing our first attempt crossing Dai, and Dai doesn't have our, its representation on Robstein, so that's pretty much why we went for Coban. But uh, we could create different pitches 
on different Ethereum testnets if we ever needed to. But uh, it's the same, it's not really a problem for us at least. Um, about having Robsten to have Eth and Coban, actually the faucets from, I'm gonna go a, a bit back here. Um, I'm gonna mention that. Uh, we have to wait five minutes, which will be the time in which 10 blocks will be min mined. And once we have 10 blocks ahead from the block that has the transaction of crossing, the oracles will send the information to the other network. About the uh, Coban and how to obtain them, I'm just gonna show you. There are two ways of getting. One is using the Coban faucet. You just log in with GitHub, paste your address. And then you send, and they will send you KIF, which is Ethereum Coban gas. The other way to get it is through their Gitter. They will have you posting your address. So you post your address and they will send you three, which is a lot. <laughs> um, okay, so mention articles. I already use, you can explain which articles are required for the language. Yeah, we will see that on the architecture part that will come after the decentralized application explanation. We share the link for the rest for the testnet. Yes, I will share the, the whole slide link. So you can check out all of the links that I'm showing. Okay, so, um, sorry. Okay, so, uh, once we waited five minutes, haven't passed that time yet, but we will see the transaction here. I'm just showing you that it's not here yet, but you will see a transaction here that will have the 70 tokens that I sent. Okay, so back to the presentation, sorry. For the inconvenience. So the token bridge currently have some limitations. You can only send a, as a minimum one token, a maximum of 10,000 tokens, and a max daily limit of 100,000 tokens. And this is a, for security reasons, we don't want to have uh, people sending uh, a very small amount because it will cost too much for the token bridge to, to handle it. Uh, we don't want to have uh, a lot of tokens moved at once because they could use that as an export. And this was the security reasons why we are setting up limits. Also, we have a whitelist. So you cannot cross any token but you can cross any token from the list of, of the whitelisted tokens. Where are the whitelisted tokens? Well, you can see them on the token list um, list. And you can see the information about the limitations on the info tab. So let's refresh this. Hasn't one yet. Oh, thank you, Fran. Okay, while we wait the five minutes, I will continue a bit with the explanation, so, so we will not get bored. So, how it works. Well, this is what you were asking before about the oracles, how it works. The architecture behind the token bridge, this is a bit simplified, but the idea is that a person, I'm sorry, on RSK or on Ethereum. In this case, we'll go from Ethereum to, uh, from RSK to Ethereum. We'll log the ERC20 token in the bridge and the bridge will emit an event that the federators, which are the oracles, will listen and then vote to a federation contract. Once you have a majority of federators that vote the same event, then the federation will submit that event to the bridge, the bridge, will process it and will release the same amount of tokens that 
uh, they were sent in the unlock in the bridge on the other network and that uh, tokens release on the other network will end up in the same address as the person had on our scale. That's like the, the basic idea and an overview of how those uh, bridge meet the event. They are federators with charter oracles that are listening for it and cross it to the federation contract and once we have a majority, then it's submitted to the bridge on the other chain. Okay. So, what's a Federator Oracle? Well, the Federator Oracle is uh, an Oracle, uh, it's a process that is using both chains, Yes, K, and Ethereum for events emitted by the bridge contract. Uh, once it has enough confirmations, this is why we have to wait five minutes in testnet, one hour in mainnet, as they are um, 10 blocks in testnet and 120 blocks in mainnet, before the federation even considers that event as a solid. Uh, once it considers that it has enough confirmations, then this oracle will vote that the um, that event to cross the chain it will submit it to the federation contract and once we have a majority of federators voting the same event with the same parameters then the federation contract will submit it to the bridge contract sorry sticking a bit in hi what are the criteria to the oracles used to approve or reject a specific transaction? We will provide some examples. Well, what they do is they verify, and actually most of the logic by, in which events are handled isn't happening on the oracles itself. They are happening on the, uh, on the smart contract. So the oracles don't do a lot of, um, uh, approve or reject. They, they simply listen to the blockchain and the node and listen for a specific address. And once they get an event that happened on that blockchain, um, they they will take that as, as true. As the event will be part of the transaction and the transaction will be part of the block and the block will valid. You know, uh, it will just do all of the validations that the, the blockchain do validating that the transaction hash is in the transaction Michael tree and in the transaction root and etc cetera, etc cetera. so um once again I'll check okay so my transaction went on I have now 70 extra Ethereum brief on my account you can see that it's in 88 and previously it was in 18 sorry and if i wanted to i can move this back so what i have to do in order to move these tokens back uh, is go to uh, i'm actually already on command so <laughs> you should go to the command network let's move the 88 the Ethereum token read and I will receive the uh, Ethereum testnet read and I will receive testnet read on a scale. So I'm gonna close these tokens. Once again, it will ask me to submit twice. First to approve the token, uh, to, uh, sorry, to approve the bridge into the contract token to then transfer the tokens. And the second one will be the actual transfer of tokens. So you first have to approve the bridge to get the tokens, and the second one is to actually transfer the tokens to the bridge. I know that this may sound cumbersome, but uh, this is the only way that you can safely send tokens uh, to a, an, a smart contract when you're using ERC20 tokens. Otherwise, 
end up with the EFC 20 bag that you send the, contact, the tokens directly to a contact, you will lose. Okay, while we wait this, I'm going to explain a bit more about what are the smart contracts that this uses and what they do. Uh, what mechanism is used to guarantee that there is enough, enough health interested in validating the corresponding risk? Is there some fluid on both sideways waiting for the equivalent on the other side to be available? Well, actually, this is what we're going to talk about. Um, F is not important here. Uh, I mean, the F is paid by the oracles, so they should have enough F to move that transaction, but if they don't have enough F to cross the event, I think that this is what you're asking, um, you will need to, I mean, the Oracle will stop and it won't vote the transactions, but once you yeah, assign it again, it will start from the what it left behind. I'm not sure if that's what you're asking with, uh, but you know, either. But you're saying that in validating the corresponding RIF. So you're not converting Ethereum to RIF. You're actually sending RIF to another contract that is a mirror contract from RIF that it has an equivalent one to one. So every time that you lock, you know, get a bit behind here. Every time you send the ERC20s to the bridge, you lock that amount. And the bridge on the other side will release the exact same amount. So you will always have the same quantity as uh, in your wallet. What do I mean with this? Uh, the lock tokens are, aren't in your wallet, they're on the bridge wallet. And the bridge on the other side will mean the exact amount that, they, that is on the event that this bridge created. So, and that's how it, it keeps the parity 101. Once you cross back, that this is what we're doing right now, you know, going from command back to RSK, what, you, what the bridge does is, it burns the tokens that were previously minted, and then it unlocks the ones that were previously locked on, on the previous transaction. So that's more or less how it works. Maybe uh, if I give an overview of each one of the contracts, it will make more sense to Okay, so the bridge actually has a couple of other contracts to make it work. That is because it's too large to be just in one smart contract. So it is assembled in a couple of them. So you have the allowed tokens. That's a smart contract which keeps the list of whitelist tokens, the max and minimum and daily limits of the tokens to cross. The federation that we already talked about is the one that uh, receives all of the events from each federator and once it has the majority on the same event with the same parameters, it will take that as value and send that to the bridge. The bridge in charge of locking the tokens, if it's the bridge that's the one that's gonna later on emit the cross event and receiving the cross events. Once it is received the cross events, it's validate that the information makes sense. What do I mean with this? It's an address, uh, it has the corresponding confirmation um, what the quantity of tokens that it has to have is between the limits. Uh, is is there a token already created for this particular token? If it's not, it will call it the side token factory, which is another contract that we use to create uh, a mirror contract that it will be an ERC-77. We call these mirror contracts side tokens. These mirror contracts, which are ERC-77, are ERC-20 compatible, and they will have the same amount of, uh, of uh, coins that you were locked on the other side because we keep minting them as they get locked on the other side and once they cross back, we burn them. So there's no chance of having double spender. 
And above all of this, we have a multi-cigar multi wallet that's the owner of the contract that also needs a majority of signatures. For example, to add another token to the, to the allow tokens wallet. Actually, the, this is the first version of the, the token bridge. We have been investigating fully decentralized. This means having no oracles in the middle, but it's just a, we are still working on it. And yeah, it doesn't scale that much. You have a, an extremely large number. Uh, that's the changes that we're making currently is we're changing, changing the current federation uh, to be the same federation as it's working now between RSK and Bitcoin. That way we'll have a lot more oracles and we'll have conversations uh, each transaction that will have our security and we will raise the limit in the token bridge gets used more and more. But currently as it doesn't have demand, I don't see as a current problem. But we have a lot of of requests. Uh, there are some also uh, one of the things that we to move on is if we saw that there's an extremely large number of transactions uh, through the bridge, uh, currently the office represents the of the, the Currently, the I mean, is bad as is the, the fees are ETC because that way it's easier. Uh, but uh, we are considering the individual. with the same token, you need to have a, 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 an oracle that price of that. Uh, that sometimes have issues if the value is not the real. Yeah. Have extremely large numbers. This is the, there are no. Well, currently the oracle rating put by the. I'm sorry, I'm gonna formulate that. The oracles are the same of the owners of the top. What I have the of crossing the tokens and having more transactions and more use to the tokens that being valuable to them. Or they are also they are that also works as collateral because for some reason they are misbehaving. They will lose face and their own are being handled. So it's like a pretty bad reputation for them. But the current scheme, the idea is when we move to use the same thing. But for the moment, it's totally. Well, when I say totally, okay, they are near C77. The nice thing about that, that is that they are to a con that was the main. 
the bridge contract is an upgradable contract and that allows us to have in the, uh, new versions. Now, mm, isn't that we ha have the key to update the bridge, like whatever we want? Actually, the multi C wallet that is the owner of the contract is the only one that can do that. And um, the idea is that each of the tokens that want to participate will have a signature in this multi C wallet, those uh, in the centralized. And if you want to check any of this, it's in an open source code. It's in the repository on GitHub. And it's actually a mono repo. So I link you to the folders of each one you want to see. There are the APIs for interacting with the contacts, the smart contact code, the federated code, and the decentralized application code. And I haven't checked it yet, but if I go to my balance, so it's a bit slow. I don't know what happened to Nifty today. Like every time you want to make a presentation, things are work. <laughs> okay, let's try something. Oh, it's my computer that is quite slow. So. Okay. so what I can offer you instead is we're going to explore in RSK, that's net. And I should be able to see the, the transaction that we cross from Co1 sending the eight tokens. My computer is a bit slow today, I don't know. Start closing a bit. Okay, so you see the 88 with tokens that we receive the same address. So we successfully crossed two Coban, the, the same token. You can also do the same from a native code contract on Coban to RSK, and you can also do it on mainnet, not just testing. Uh, okay, still a bit slow, but we're getting there. So if I check on Coban, I see that I almost have no rift. And if I check on RSK testnet, you'll see that I have 688 testnet rift. So we successfully did. Um, you can find uh, frequent asked questions, how to use it, and the repo information inside the token bridge. The repo information is over here. If I go correctly, oh, sorry, I oh, know, here, repositories. And uh, if you have any doubts, and the get RBTC will send you to the faucet if you're interested. If you use mainnet, you can go to use mainnet address to the token bridge address and we'll see um, that you can connect if you are not on RSK or in Ethereum and get RBTC will send you the coin switch in order to obtain that. So uh, that's pretty much it. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a bit. Okay, uh, any questions? Hi, Pedro, how are you? I, I don't know if you could see the questions that they were making here from Eduardo.
Okay. Cool. Yeah, I tried to now, who, answer uh, them. Julian just, oh, sorry, just uh, made a new yeah, one. Uh, how can you, we add a token if required to the whitelist? Well, um, there's an email. Uh, so you can contact us. And sorry, I was looking. Where was and now that? I share with, with the people okay, you can contact the our link. Through Gitter. We have an open chat, uh, and also we, on on the developers oh. landing page we have an open chat that is open twenty four hours. That's a good thing to to tell the our, our audience. Yeah, and you can contact our uh, advocates also. Um, then uh, RSK will evaluate the possibility of adding a right. token Putting that you suggest. Uh, hold on. There you go. Perfect. Okay, great. Well, if anybody has another question, okay. this is the moment. If not, of course, you can always uh, contact us through Gitter, through our emails, or just answering this. And well, Pedro, thank you very much. I think that your explanation was was, was very simple and very direct, and, and people could 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 understand how, how the bridge works. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Well, and if you want to listen also to the Thank Spanish you, version, uh, oh, it will be at six o'clock and GMT minus three in Argentina time. So it's in four hours from now. Okay. Thank you.